In this video, I'm gonna explain why I love my geared tripod head and why I personally feel more landscape photographers should consider using them. I'm gonna specifically discuss the Benro GD3WH because that's the geared head that I've got and I'll provide a kind of mini review of this tripod head but I'm actually gonna spend probably a bit more time just discussing the concept and the topic of geared heads in general. So just for a bit of context, I have been shooting with ball heads for the last 12 years and I continue to do so. I'm shooting with one right now. The two other tripod heads that I own are ball heads. This is the only geared head. Um, and until recently, I hadn't really considered any other approaches because as they say, you don't miss what you've never had. Um, and I've always been pretty content with my ball head shooting. However, earlier last year, I went to the Isle of Skye and I spent a bit of time with a mountain guide there, fantastic uh, mountain guide. And um, he particularly was shooting with this exact uh, Benro GD3WH tripod head. It's a bit of a mouthful. Um, and I was very impressed with how he used it. And it made me start to question my own use of tripod heads and whether my choices were ultimately the right choices for the way that I conduct my photography. So kind of driven out of curiosity more than anything, about six months ago I took the plunge and I actually bought the, the Benro geared head and um, it was a bit of a gamble, a bit of a step into the unknown, but ultimately I feel it's a gamble that has paid off. The primary function of a geared head is to let the photographer make tiny or large incremental changes to their composition in an easy yet highly, highly precise manner. Now if I quickly just talk you through the actual controls and just generally this tripod head, it might help you understand them a little bit more. Essentially it's got three control knobs that control each of the axes of movement within the actual tripod head. And the first knob at the bottom here controls your pan on the actual head and it gives a full 360 degrees of movement right round. You've then got a um, forward and backwards uh, tilt here um, and on this particular head that uh, goes between 90 degrees and 30 degrees um, and then you've also got the, the side tilt at the top and that goes between 90, 90 and 15 degrees. I tend to find that if um, the degrees of movement are restricting in any particular direction then you just mount your camera the other way and it kind of unlocks that perfectly. Um, but I don't have any issues with the restrictions in movement. It's, uh, it's never restricted me at any point while I've been shooting with it at all. The control knobs themselves are relatively easy to move but not too easy to move so you're never going to knock them that's nothing you need to worry about but interestingly each of the knobs also has a quick release wheel uh, and that means that you can make huge movements through any of your axes which is really useful for quickly setting up competitions. The GD3WH uses an Arca Swiss mounting plate at the top which is fantastic and it also has a pull uh, quick release mechanism uh, which makes your camera particularly uh, safe in the, the lock there. You're never really gonna drop it out of that, which is great. It uses a three eighth of an inch uh, screw to mount to your actual tripod. It's generally very well engineered, stable. Um, I think it's got a magnesium alloy construction to it, which is fantastic. It's got a maximum load of six kilos, if my memory serves me correctly. The tripod head weighs about 870 grams. It has three bubble levels, which makes it tremendously easy to level out in the field. And just overall, I just think it's a really well constructed, fantastic tripod head and I honestly could not recommend it enough. I've been tremendously impressed by the GD3WH. I think they need a better name for it though because it doesn't really roll off the tongue very easily. Now I'm just going to give you a very quick demonstration on how you would use a geared head like this in the field. So here we can see uh, a typical setup and the light's pretty rubbish today so I don't think I'm gonna be actually taking any picture but this is just for demonstration purposes. You can see here on this wheel that with the quick release uh, wheel here, 
you can very quickly pan across your scene and then you can make slight micro adjustments with the actual knob. Uh, so when I get to any sort of composition, I'll usually pan to the sort of area that I want to. And then really for me, it's, uh, it's about the up and down tilt then. And you can see again, you can control it on the quick release uh, wheel. So it's really easy to go up and down to get to the bit that you want to. And then you can dial in uh, with a high degree of accuracy. And then you've got at the top here, this is the, the side tilt. Um, I tend to use this um, less frequently than the other two knobs, but it's certainly useful when your tripod is kind of on uneven ground, for example. But you can see uh, with the little spirit level in the back of the camera here that um, it's generally pretty easy to level off your camera and uh, it really takes no time at all. So what are the things that I particularly love about geared heads? Well, ball heads are fantastic. They're affordable, they're easy to use, and they're lightweight and compact. And I think it makes them a brilliant choice for probably the majority of photographers, to be honest. But specifically for landscape photography, I think geared heads really come into their own. I know personally, I've been striving for greater quality and accuracy in my photography. And one of the big problems that I've always encountered with ball heads is the concept of having to control all three axes of movement simultaneously. Geared heads allow you to control a single axis of movement at any one time. And when combined with small incremental geared movements, it makes them extremely powerful for fine tuning a composition to an incredible high degree of accuracy. Ball heads may be hands down faster, but in my personal opinion, they cannot compete with the relentless precision that a geared head has given me. I feel geared heads suit a slower form of photography. And personally, it has motivated me to get my compositions correct in camera. I'm finding that I am using cropping and straightening in post uh, significantly less since starting to use this kind of tripod head because generally I'm getting things correct in the camera uh, more often than not and it's generally made me think about the movements within my composition with an increased focus on individual axes of movement and generally I think that makes me more considered in my compositional decision making. The second reason that I love geared heads is I genuinely feel that my panoramic shooting has never been better as a consequence of using that. And the main reason for that is when shooting with ball heads, when you're looking at uh, your sequence of images across your pan, quite often you may have to make visual judgments on the overlap between each image or you may have to look at sort of difficult to view degree markings on your tripod head or you may just have to make a, a general guess at the lateral movements within your sequence. The thing with the geared head is though, I don't need to do any of that slow process. All I need to do is remember the number of geared turns in my pan, and I can very quickly replicate uh, that right across the sequence. And I genuinely think the quality and the ease at which I take panoramas has never been better as a consequence of this because I can put my camera down, level off my uh, tripod and all I need to, to know is how many gear turns uh, I need for the particular focal length that I'm shooting at. Once I've figured that out, then I can just quickly scan across the scene uh, and it's never been quicker and more accurate. The final reason that I love geared heads is stability. Now, even the best ball heads out there will suffer from droopage. <laughs> I love that word. <laughs> if they're not locked off properly, or they're carrying a particularly heavy front load, so like a, an F2.8 um, telephoto, for example, it can happen. With this 
particular geared head, and I would assume all geared heads, there's zero chance of that happen happening. This is hands down the most stable and secure tripod head I have ever used. I have suffered absolutely zero problems, and that is particularly important when shooting longer exposures, for example, or at longer focal ranges, where even micro movements uh, caused by droopage, for example, can strip away your image sharpness. I'd be lying to you though, if I said there weren't some drawbacks to using these type of tripod heads. Firstly, they tend to be heavier and larger. Uh, this particular geared head, the uh, the Benro GD3WH, is slightly heavier than the Benro equivalent ball heads that I was looking at. I am carrying now, on average, about 150 grams more in weight, which isn't ideal. Basically, the extra complexity of the tripod head comes at a cost. Geared heads will tend to be a little bit taller and a little bit wider than their ball head equivalents. Um, and for some, that could be a significant factor. I would say for those that are highly weight and space conscious, this is probably likely to be a showstopper. But for me personally, I'm prepared to carry that extra little bit of weight for the extra precision that this has introduced into my photography. The second real drawback is speed. There's no getting away from the fact that using geared heads is slower than using ball heads. Rather than controlling all three axes of movement simultaneously, you have to control each one by one. Um, however, I personally found that once I got used to using the tripod um, and sort of conditioned to it, I could still set up my compositions relatively quickly. So in reality, the actual difference could only be several seconds. For those that value speed, this is likely to be really off-putting. But in my experience, speed is rarely that important in landscape photography. In that particular niche, I don't even see this as a significant drawback. It could actually be argued that if precision is highly important to you, then a geared head like this actually improves your compositional workflow and may actually allow you to get that precision quicker. As the famous military saying goes, slow is smooth, smooth is fast. So that's it for today's video and this little exploration into the world of geared heads. As a closing thought, I would just like to make clear that there's no right or wrong choice when it comes to tripod heads. Simply go with whatever suits your particular style of photography best. I personally have found that geared heads suit my style of photography best, but it may not suit you perfectly. So um, yeah, this video is just designed just to give you some food for thought, shall we say. Um, if you've got any thoughts on geared heads uh, in general, if you've got any experiences of using them, if you've got any thoughts on the Benro GD3WH, um, then pop them down below in the comments. I'd be really interested to hear your thoughts in this particular topic. And uh, yeah, that's about it for today's video. So um, take care everyone. Thanks very much for watching. If you haven't yet subscribed, hit that little button just below. And um, don't forget to give it a, a thumbs up as well. All of that really helps me out. So um, I'll catch you all soon. Take care, everyone.